Will you have to register as a sex offender in California if the minor consented? Absolutely. In this video, we're gonna break down what that looks like. We're gonna break down the age of consent in California. We're gonna talk about Romeo and Juliet laws. We're gonna talk about 290 registration, the different tiers, what's required, what's mandatory, what is discretionary in law. We're also gonna talk about online dating scams. We're gonna talk about online chat rooms. We're gonna talk about sexting. We're gonna talk about issues even if there are two minors and what still constitutes, at least under the law, as child pornography in California. We're gonna dive into all of this to make sure you understand what your rights are, what the risks are, so you can prepare accordingly and hopefully never find yourself in a situation like this. But if you do, you know how to deal with it. To protect your freedom, to protect your future, you gotta understand your rights. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing is, what is the age of consent in California? Now, there could be age of consent in different states. It's 16, 17. Let's be clear about something. The age of consent in California is 18 years old. So if you're hooking up with someone, girl, boy, whoever, that's 17 years and 360 days old, they are a minor in California. They could consent, they could write it down that they're consenting. It doesn't matter if you're 18 or above, legally speaking, it is still a crime. Now, some other key ages in California as it relates to sex crimes. 18, we know, is the age of consent. 16 is another age that is important because there's increased penalties if the alleged victim is under the age of 16. If they're in that 16 to 17 range, there's less penalties, your custody credits, if you wind up going to state prison, if you get convicted for many offenses with a 16 or a 17 year old is a lot different and a lot better for you, the potential defendant, than it would be if you find yourself involved with someone under the age of 16. So 14 is another big cutoff. If someone's under the age of 14, that makes it a violent felony a lot of times. Certainly the argument is, well, how could a 13 year old or 12 year old, God forbid, even worse consent? Well, even if they say they did, it is still a serious crime and it is a violent crime in many instances if there's an inappropriate relationship with someone under the age of 14. So what we have some key ages, 18, 16, 14, then there's 10 as another important age as it relates to possible penalties for any sex crimes if someone you know, or God forbid yourself, are convicted of a sex crime, whether consent is on the table or not here in California. But in summary, there is no such thing as a minor consenting. It could certainly factor into what type of sentence or what type of outcome, or even in some situations, if the case would even get filed. But legally speaking, by the letter of the law in California, it is not a defense, certainly not a viable one, to being charged of any inappropriate contact with a minor. All right, so earlier in this video, we talked about how the age of consent in California is 18, and there is no defense of consent. It's not like, well, you know, he or she consented to us having this physical contact. Well, it is important though, when looking at it as a mitigant, okay? There's really two types of ways a case could go. One is it's a legal issue, meaning there's a proof issue, whether you're factually innocent, whether you're not guilty of the charges. And then there's also what's known as mitigation evidence. There's certain pieces of evidence that are not relevant as to whether or not a crime has or has not been committed, certainly not beyond a reasonable doubt, but mitigation evidence is important in determining one, whether charges should be filed, not whether they can be or will be, whether they should be, and then also if charges are filed, what the right outcome is, whether or not you're convicted. So one key piece of mitigation evidence, arguably that your attorney should be discussing, would be if there is an issue of consent. Now let's be real about something, right? You're not gonna get very far in life or with your case if your defense is, well, you know, the 12 year old, the 14 year old consented, and here you are at 30, 40, 50 years old. Right? But if you find yourself in a situation, we hear a lot about Romeo and Juliet laws, right? So, you know, say someone's in a relationship, you know, you're 20 years old, the minor's 17, it's consensual in the sense of everyone is doing this on their free will. Maybe not legally in the state of California, right? Because we know the legal defense is 18, but no one's forcing, there's no coercion, nothing like that. Well, it's still a crime, but it is a mitigant that you're in a committed relationship, that maybe that relationship started before the older individual 
became of age. So maybe it started when they were 17 and the other person was 14, right? And that's a difficult thing to ask if you're in a re committed relationship, 17, 16 years old. And just because someone turns 18, well, legally speaking, now it's a crime if you were to hook up or have any physical interaction. But that is something that would be a mitigant. More often than not, those cases are not going to get filed. And if they are filed, a lot of times it would be a misdemeanor at worst, arguably not even a sex offender registration, which we're going to get into in the next clip. All right, so now we're going to talk about some ways people get caught up in what could start as a consensual encounter or consensual discussion between a minor and an adult, but ultimately lead to a lot more serious charges. And there's a couple of common themes that we see, particularly here in San Diego, when dealing with these types of alleged offenses and these alleged offenders. And they all usually surround online chats or apps or dating apps or something along those lines, and also high school relationships or college relationships where you're dealing with issues with the school or what's known as the Child Abuse Central Index. So let's go into it a little bit further. So there's a lot of time dating apps, right? Whether you know it's Grindr, whether it's whatever the app may or may not be, you're dealing with situations where people as part of that app are supposed to be representing themselves as to be at least 18 years old. It's a really good fact for the defense and it's like, hey, my client you know, was on this dating app and the other individual, in order to join that app, had to represent at least to the app that they were of age. But what you don't want to do and what you don't want to see from someone like my perspective is getting a case and then there's discussions right away that go off the app and talk about, hey, you know I'm really 15, right? Oh, that's cool. Don't tell anybody. Problematic. What started as consent, what's obviously finished up probably as consent during taking that chat out of that chat room and maybe meeting in person is still a crime in California right? Arguably a different story if you meet up with someone and then they tell you after the fact, hey, I'm, I'm really 15. Okay, those cases you rarely, if ever, would see filed. But what's problematic about it is when you have text messages, when you have calls, when you have admissions, hey, I don't care. Or hey, why did you tell me? But that's cool. That's problematic. And then you go into a situation where you're doing something wrong online. And then if you show up or if you arrange a meeting, if you show up and if you physically act upon what you discussed in the chat room, on the text, via email, whatever the forum was, then you're dealing with arguably a more serious offense. And one other thing we see a lot in these chat rooms or when you start exchanging pictures, pornographic images or videos, then it turns into a child pornography charge. Another super serious offense, another mandatory sex offender registry offense in California. So you can see how these things sort of snowball from what could be an initial encounter with someone you think may be 18, and then even a consensual encounter when they tell you they're not. Legally speaking, though, that doesn't matter. And legally speaking, you're gonna be in a world of hurt far more than you would just by the initial discussion when you start acting on the things you're talking about with a minor, especially if that minor is under 14 or under 16, certainly if they're under 18. Let's assume a situation where you know, you're at a bar, right? Drinking age is 21. Legally speaking, no one's supposed to be in that bar that's 20, that's 19. Now let's imagine a situation where you or a loved one goes out, they're of age, they're at least 18, right? They're presumably, or at least should be 21 or, or older if they're at a bar. They meet someone and then they hook up and then they find out after the fact that that person was really 17, right? What happens? Legally speaking, was a crime committed? Yeah, legally speaking, it was. But how's the prosecutor going to get a jury to convict under those circumstances, right? Because there's a situation where it's like, what am I supposed to do? I'm not going to ask someone for an identification before we hook up, right? And that doesn't have that jury appeal. That doesn't have that public appeal or that public outrage the way it would if it's someone online who's meeting with someone who says they're under 18 and then they're acting upon that when they're 21, 22, 23 years old but something we don't see a ton of. Why? Because it usually doesn't get prosecuted unless there's that element of knowledge or at least a reasonable belief that at least one of those parties was under the age of 18. All right, so in this video, we've talked about a lot of different things, but one thing we sort of alluded to but never really got to was sex offender registration under Penal Code Section 290 and all the subsidiaries and division, subdivisions of it. So let's talk about it for a little bit. There are a lot of offenses in California, especially when you're dealing with under 16, certainly under 14, even worse, under 10, that are mandatory sex offender registration. And how the law is in California is, there was a time when if you had to register, it meant for life no matter what the offense was. It could be a misdemeanor indecent exposure, it could be a misdemeanor sexual battery. You register, you have to register for life. Well, the law changed in California that said now there's this tiered system. There's tier one, tier two, tier three. And if you're a certain tier, it could be 10 years mandatory minimum 
and then you can petition the court to relieve you of that obligation. There are other tiers, tier two, that's a 20 year type analysis where you have to register for at least 20 years with some exceptions that could extend it. But after 20 years, it doesn't automatically go away. You still have to affirmatively petition to be relieved of that obligation. And then there's tier three, which is like the old days, it's still life. Now that's important when we're talking about age, when we're talking about consent, when we're talking about age of the alleged victim and also age of the alleged accuser or the suspect. Because if you're within 10 years of each other, there's an argument to be made that a lot of offenses now are discretionary registration, right? As long as it's not a violent act or anything along those lines. So if you have a situation where you know, you're 23 years old and you're accused of having inappropriate contact under law with the 16 year old, if it's consensual, it's not a defense to the charge, but it may get you in that realm where sex offender registration is no longer mandatory, which means you and more importantly, the attorney that's there with and for you has a really good argument and is in a much better position to try and resolve the case if that's in your best interest without you having to register at all as a sex offender. So that's a relatively newer change in the law in California that your attorney certainly should be aware of depending on your age, depending on the age of the alleged victim in the case. There are other offenses that are still always going to be treated harshly as they should be, but that's another factor whereas age of the accuser or consent may not matter legally, but does matter when it comes to punishment and what the appropriate outcome is. All right, so in this video, we talked about sex offenses. We talked about how you would have to register as a sex offender, even if the minor consented in many situations. And despite what we hear about there, about how California, you know, you could do whatever you want and there's no punishment and there's no sex offender registration anymore. It's just factually not true. Sure, there have been some modifications to get more in line with the times, more in line with equity and equality under the law. But the reality of the situation is the age of consent in California is still 18. There is no defense that the minor under 18 consented. It still can and often does get charged as a crime. In many offenses, particularly when you're dealing with minors under the age of 16, it is exclusively a registrable offense and there's not that discretion that we normally would see. There are some exceptions if you're within 10 years between the alleged victim and the suspect, but each case is different. There are certain different factors that play into it. So the bottom line in this video is these cases are taken seriously, as serious as ever, and you need to be aware of it. The first step is you don't wanna act on any impulses or any con concerns you may have about what you're thinking about doing, right? You wanna get yourself help. We could be a resource in that regard to point you in the right direction with the forensic psychologist with the get a treatment provider so you don't act on these urges, you don't act on these impulses, you don't make a decision that will affect you, the person you're doing these acts with, their families, your families for the rest of your life because that's what these consequences are, okay? But if you find yourself in a situation where you're being accused of it, whether you've done it or not, you still have certain ways to protect your freedom, ways to protect your future. They all center around knowing your rights and one of those rights that is essential in any case, particularly when accused of a sex offense, is to keep your mouth closed. Do not have these long ongoing discussions with prosecutors, with cops, with your accuser. First thing you should do, reach out to a qualified, locally experienced criminal defense law firm to understand what rights you have, what options you have, to make sure you don't give up, make sure you protect your freedom, to protect your future, know your rights.